Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and in this video tutorial, and I'm super excited, I'll be sharing with you the easy way that I draft and sew, ta-da, a Raglan sweatshirt. Yes, it is pretty easy and pretty straightforward because Raglan sleeve is very forgiving and it's really fun to combine two different fabrics as well. So if you're a complete beginner to the sewing scene, that's all right, I gotcha. I'll show you three easy ways how to get to the same result that I'm wearing right now. You just have to to put in the work because remember if I can do it then you can do it so let's get started you're watching easy sewing DIY a weekly series where I make a simple pattern then I sew it and love it everything is straightforward so you can make it as well tune in for new episodes every weekend let's start by selecting the best possible fabric for this project and as a reference keep in mind sweatshirts and t-shirts and that is kind of fabric that we want to go for we want something nice and soft and also pretty stretchy here i have this gray sweatshirt in bada jeans and also this tropical print lyocell that i bought at joann's as well both have two-way stretch significant two-way stretch that you will find on t-shirt like garments now to draft the Raglan sleeve, we will need something to start with. And as I mentioned, this is the easy way that I draft and sew a Raglan sweatshirt. So I really hope that it helps you as well. And I start with a simple t-shirt pattern. Now, there's three ways how to get to that. Very easy, all three of them, especially the last one. It's gonna be great for beginners if you're terrified of drafting your own patterns. So number one, you can trace your own t-shirt. I have a full tutorial on that, very quick and easy. I will leave all of those in the info box below. Number two, you can draft your own t-shirt pattern from scratch and the first method and the second method are pretty much the same especially the way that I do it so either way you're gonna have a very similar result number three is you can download a free sewing pattern of a t-shirt again I have a full video on that I discuss uh, free sewing patterns that are great for the drafting tutorials that I provide for you guys if you're really scared of drafting your own or maybe you're just a beginner in this whole sewing scene it will definitely help you out so once you have have your basic t-shirt pattern that's where the red glance sleeve will come in now whether you are tracing your t-shirt drafting your own or downloading a pattern all of these following steps are going to be exactly the same for all three options what we're going to do is we will need the front the back and two sleeves now the next step is to place your front with your back shoulder seam to shoulder seam and tape it together after that, you're going to repeat exactly the same steps for the sleeves as well. So that way you will get one big pattern piece that we're going to use to create your raglan sleeves. Now before we move on onto the creating the raglan sleeves, let's take a look at the neckline. Now my neckline here is pretty narrow and I would like it to be a little bit bigger and a little bit rounder just to really give that sweatshirt feel. And I'm not gonna use anything fancy. I'm just gonna get a plate from my kitchen and I'm gonna use that. Just remember to not to center the plate on your pattern because your front neckline is always going to be a little bit deeper and a little bit longer than your back neckline then grab a sharpie or a pencil uh, trace it and cut it it's time to mark the raglan sleeve and i am marking two and a half inches on the front neckline and two and a half inches on the back neckline from the shoulder seam how do i get two and a half inches well i don't have any raglan sweatshirts at home apart from the ones that i've made for myself and i actually only have one and I just looked at the inspiration pictures and then I looked in the mirror and then I assumed the two and a half inches would be a good length. You can do a little bit more if your size is bigger or a little bit less if your size is smaller. Now make a straight line from those points all the way to the bottom of the armhole, both on the front piece and on the back piece. Let me outline this in a sharpie with a dashed line and I'm going to curve in this line just by a tiny bit. And here I really want you to know that there are multiple ways that you can draft a Raglan sleeve. You can leave it just as a straight line, you can curve it in a little bit, you can curve it in on both on bodice and on a sleeve to create a more fitted silhouette. But in this case, this slight little curve is going to do exactly what I'm going for. 
Now I definitely wanted to make sure that my sweatshirt's a little bit looser. I definitely wasn't on the journey to make it super form-fitting or super tight because I wanted to make sure that I can actually wear like a t-shirt or a tank top underneath for a little bit more layer so that way I can wear it maybe during some winter months as well. Now cut out your sleeve and let's talk about the length. I know that I need to extend the length of my pattern by 20 inches starting at the shoulder seam, not at the neckline, but the original shoulder seam of the classic t-shirt. Now that's where it comes in real handy to start with a simple t-shirt pattern instead of drafting it from scratch because measuring the length of the sleeve from the neckline is really awkward. So if you have a simple t-shirt or you started with a simple t-shirt pattern, measure the length starting at the shoulder and that's going to give you a more accurate measurement. So here I'm taking 20 inches starting at the shoulder seam all the way straight. Now to measure the width of your sleeve just take a measuring tape wrap it around your wrist add a couple of inches for the ease depending on how stretchy is your fabric and my result is 8 inches. I'm going to take 4 inches on one side and 4 inches on the other side since both sides of our sleeve are completely identical. Now you can draw a straight line from the beginning of the sleeve, the original sleeve, all the way down to your sleeve hem. And then you can take a Sharpie and do a dashed line, curve it in a little bit um, just to maintain that shape of the sleeve. But pretty much your sleeve pattern is done and you're ready to cut it out. Marking the stretch direction on your pattern piece is really useful so that way you don't end up with the sleeves that you can't fit in. And here's a little suggestion. Once you actually have the full reglan sleeve drafted, here you can start playing with the length of your sleeve. Let's say you like it to be a little shorter or a three-quarter sleeve. Absolutely, all you have to do is just shorten the length from the neckline to however long you would like your sleeve to be. Let's cut some fabric out. And this is probably one of the best parts of any sewing project, you know, in my humble opinion. So when you're cutting this fabric, something to remember is the direction of the stretch. You want it to be widthwise, not lengthwise, because it doesn't matter if it stretches up or down, but it has to stretch side to side. Another thing is I cut my patterns without seam allowances. So when I cut my fabric, I add seam allowances as I go. Same goes for the length of the hem. Here I'm adding about two and a half inches and I'm also curving it in. So if you like your seam allowances to be on the pattern right away, do that first and then cut your fabric. On to the sleeves. Now when you're cutting the sleeves, another two things to remember. The direction of the stretch like we have just discussed and also my knit is directional. So I want to make sure that I cut the sleeves facing up instead of facing down. Here you need to make sure that the center of the sleeve is parallel to the edge of the fabric to make sure that when you're done with your sewing project, your sleeve doesn't start to twist in all sorts of different directions. Same goes for the sleeve. Don't forget to add enough for the hem of the sleeve. Uh, maybe you're going to be doing a band like on a sweatshirt. That's great. Just add enough seam allowance over there. But if you're going to be folding it over and top stitching with a cover stitch machine or a twin needle or maybe your serger, definitely remember to add enough. And listen, I was so inspired by the fabric combination and I loved it so much that I even made a little set for my baby girl consisting out of two pieces by using the remnants, the leftover remnants from my sleeves. So I definitely encourage you to have fun with choosing fabrics for your Raglan sweatshirt. All right, we have everything cut out. We have the front part, we have the back part. We have two sleeves. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take the front part and we're going to take our sleeves. You can mark where is your front of the sleeve or back of the sleeve, but you can clearly see by the difference of the necklines. The front of the sleeve is going to have a lower neckline part. Now you're going to place them right sides together and you're going to stitch the bodice together with both of the sleeves. Definitely pin it in place. It's going to make it easier for you to work with. And this is how it looks when this step is done. If your seam bubbles up just by a tiny bit, chances are your tension is off. But the good thing is you can always fix it up with a good press with your iron. Just make sure that you choose the correct setting for your fabric. After that, you're going to repeat exactly the same step, but this time you're going to attach sleeves right sides together to the back bodice. 
Now, before you get scared because I'm using a serger and you only have a sewing machine, listen guys, I did not use serger for the first five years of my sewing and I was sewing a whole bunch of knits and stretchy fabrics on my sewing machine just by using a zigzag stitch. So please do not be intimidated. Yes, I'm using a serger because I have it and it's convenient and why not? But for you, if you're just beginning uh, a zigzag stitch, a lightning stitch, a stretch stitch on your sewing machine, absolutely, you can use all of those just like I did and millions of other people around the world are using that without having a serger. So please, don't be scared it's so easy you just have to give it a try now onto the side seam and the side seam goes real easy you're going to start at the hem of the sleeve and you're going to drop it all the way to the bottom hem of the bodice now here's a little tip i am cover stitching my hem over the sleeve therefore i'm doing that first and then i'm doing the side seams and if you're a beginner and you're using a sewing machine to do your hem, if I were you, I would do the hem first since then you're going to be working with a flat pattern instead of working in a circular pattern once your sleeve is stitched together. Here's another little tip. To make sure that your side seams match exactly perfectly, you want to make sure that you point seam allowances in two different directions. That is going to reduce the bulk, allowing for a really nice and neat finish where all of your seams match. I am finishing my hem on the cover stitch machine. However, when I was just starting to sew and I only had my sewing machine, I would opt for a band. A band on stretch garments for me was an easier option for sure, especially when I did not have a twin needle and I still don't have a twin needle. So if I were you, I would opt for a band. And we are on the finishing line. And the last thing to do is to do the neck band. What you're going to do is you're going to fold your garment in half like this. This is going to make it easier for you to measure the length. Now take your measuring tape and measure the length. Now mine is 10 inches. What I usually do for the length of the neck band is I divide this length in five. So 10 divided in five would be two inches. That is how much less I'm going to make my band. So 10 inches minus two would be eight inches. Now this is on the fold, so I have to multiply it by two. So 16 inches is going to be the full length of my neck band. Add one inch for the seam allowance, and that's how long it's going to be now my neck band. And usually the width, I take two inches that's on the fold. So fold it, it's going to be one inch. And once you stretch it out, of course, it's going to be a little bit shorter as well. Once I stitch my neck band together, I mark the center front of my neck band and I also mark the center front of the sweatshirt and the center back of the sweatshirt as well. I know the majority of people mark quarter points. I only do half points. It just works easier for me. However, you can do quarter points uh, if that is easier or more convenient for you as well. And then I pin it in those two places and then I stretch it out as I sew and that makes it for a really nice and even neck band. And this is how it looks when it's all done. Again, if you feel that your neck band bubbles up a little bit, you can always give it a little bit of a press. But if I were you, I would not press on the very edge of the neckline, the one that is facing your neck, because then it's going to flatten it real good and it's just gonna look a little bit too flat. I like when it's kind of like a little bit, a little bit bubbly on your neck, just kind of has that little bit of a roll. And ta-da, you have a raglan sweatshirt that you made all by yourself. Guys, I truly hope that this was helpful and inspiring for you to take that first step in sewing and drafting your own patterns with a little bit of help from either a free sewing pattern or maybe tracing your own t-shirt. If you would like to see more, definitely click on the screen. Those videos are all gonna help you even further with drafting your own fun designs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.